For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know. He's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What, so? Oh. <sighs> the, the, With a brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's coped this far. <laughs> yeah, I did a bit of an experiment on this, right? Brilliant. It's my job at home to, to wash up, right? Suzanne does... She gives you all the really big responsible ones. <laughs> yeah. she, she, she sort of, like, pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well, you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? And um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff, uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right, if I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> And so what did you do? So I just sort of You sliced off your thumbs. I, I just sort of <laughs> held them in, and it's amazing how, like, it took me ages. Just having that, that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared. Th 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 these are milestones in human evolution, the opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. These, these, are, these are massive things in, in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> But well, what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean before we got here, there was people who, whose eyes were looking in their head? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult. It took you ages. So you you didn't you didn't just give give up once you realised how essential thumbs were. No, you actually washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in and Carl's there, just covered in water and and very liquid suds, standing on a pile of broken crockery. Yeah, lun plunging his face into the sink every three, 30 seconds and just swishing his head around. <laughs> but we talked about the, the washing up thing before, I don't know, and uh, I sort of look out, out of a window, so the sink's in front of the window. Yeah. And that's why I quite like washing up, because I can just look out onto the street, see people going past. There's like a local homeless fella called Franco. You know, I look out that he's all right and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some uh, sort of there's some Chinese people who live on in a flat, right, really small flat, and they're up till all hours. I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning. Right? They're always really noisy in that. But above them, there was some woman, right, who um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no no bra on that. Naked. Yeah, just... That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about, you know, on that. So I was like, oh, what's going on there? So I kept, carried on washing up and that, right? And uh, <laughs> kept looking, and then I was looking and she looked at me. Right, so we made eye contact. <laughs> sure. So I was like, oh, God, right? So, um... What I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that. I thought if I just show a little bit of, little bit of sort of arse cheek, then it's kind of like, right, we, we quits. Right? <laughs> I don't understand the thinking. <laughs> so, so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up, right? She sees me with, like, my pants sort of down a little bit with my arse out. She said, what are you doing? I said, don't look now. I said, but there's a woman over the road, right? With no pants on and that. She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> I love the fact that he explains the rules and Suzanne's meant to go, OK. <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't... So, so hang on. So you, you you showed a bit of your arse. You turned, presumably, to show the arse. Or well, waggled the arse just, out the I woman. had to lift it up a little bit on the sort of on the draining board. What? Hang on, though. What, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction? When she saw a bit of your arse, what happened? When she saw my arse? Yeah. Well, then I wasn't looking because I thought... In a way, I don't want I don't want it to look like 
well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just Look, thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out I of it. I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, you know, a much better film had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky, though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? OK, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert... Your little round headstone. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> so everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It'd look daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So what, all it is is... I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, I'm wondering if that could almost be the B-side to... Uh, B-side to Knob at Night. I could eat a Knob at Night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but but sometimes, like, there's people who, who are now, now dead, but everybody raves about them. What I mean is, if... I'll just answer the question. Who would you be and why? It's someone you no, admire no, no. or you think had a good life. But, just answer the but question. But what I mean is, it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke, but I wouldn't want the asshole that he had. So I don't want to live his life. Right. But it's good to be... You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of... Uh, uh, Saving the world. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would I want to, whose job would oh. I want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> So when he, what? So his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may, maybe you know, his his worries are different worries. With you know, people who have a lot of money, come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he? Saying stop war and all that. I mainly don't know. because he's got, you know, he's got more more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's going to get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor. You've got the one house, if this is a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then, I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure, so with, where is with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful life and happy life, there's more for you to lose, is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got... My, my timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. So now suddenly... Five I'm, until seven, washing up, with no thumbs. <laughs> I, I like... I've sort of turned into, like, an old person where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy are now the main event. So but like, hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne Shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> The word cobbler. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly. Because last time, last time you were going to the toffee shop. <laughs> yeah. And now you're going to the cobblers. Next week it's the candlestick maker. <laughs> but all, all I mean is that suddenly is a nice little day out. I'm sort of putting my coat on, going right. I'll go and go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's cobbler's all right. He's you know he's doing. You know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in like a, a bed sit and he had two tellies. <laughs> he had he had like one that 
that the sound didn't work on oh, and right. one that the picture didn't. But both together, it worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in, like, a, a rubber dinghy. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he was... He Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide. Why did he sleep in a rubber dinghy? It's he, just like boats and stuff, and uh, he sort of... <laughs> yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on. Boats are better to sail on. Well, he just he just had it in there. It's a bed set. It was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this. He's got it's this. Moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy. So he's thinking, well, rather than it getting in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a he was a cobbler, <laughs> and he he used to like repair like my shoes and that. Right. Yeah. But he'd it, always sort of overdo them. Right. <laughs> so, what do you mean? Like um, <laughs> fancy. Do you know like pimp my ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a, the stereo. Yeah. Well, no. There was it, horns. It, it, it's like... Here go comes Carl Bil- stripes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkerton. He's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he just makes shoes that would last forever. So instead of putting like one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built-up shoes <laughs> that you never see. He'd just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever. But they did. But they look like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like they, suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out. But he's he's a cobbler, and you know it's work. That's that's always always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with to 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 to, to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So I just took them to the cobblers and that, and that that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog. You know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they, what they pay and that. And I thought, if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station. Dare I say it, on... I, I, can I discuss your... Uh, well, it was an all right wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that. But to go from the head of a department on a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round I, I don't know what no I, but it's about being happy isn't it i know but that's that's commendable if that's true but it okay and All that right. makes you happier well i haven't i haven't walked the dog yet but i'm just saying if i do i mean i'm not taking it if it's raining i'm just thinking if it's a nice sunny day and i fancy a potter i'll i'll go round to her and say well how much are you paying i'll take take the dog a walk and sure stuff. but I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up Potter, cobblers, toffee shop. It, it, it's, uh, it's very, very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. And getting a lot of stuff about uh, philosophy. Oh, yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes, yeah. the French philosopher. Yeah. What was what's, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email. Someone said, uh, "What do you think of of him?" And I was like, oh, "I don't know." He um, uh, famously he he pondered his his own existence, uh, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. He was thinking about that. He was thinking, "How do I know all this is true? Everything around me." And he thought, uh, "Well, I can see it, and I can smell it, and I can hear it." And he went, "Oh yeah, but my senses can be fooled. I could be dreaming. But if I'm dreaming, then at least." I'm alive, at least I have some sort of consciousness. So if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore, I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always being... And were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> And it's just like, what, what was love the rush? I to teach Latin. What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right, now, would you say he's, he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. Right, <laughs> if he's that bright, you know he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Well, he's right, not, so, well, he's well, not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo! What's the story with the egg? He was on holiday or something, right? And... He was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He was, at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the sort of... This over bird the was what? A great orc? 
What what so, what size bird killed him with his egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And and the way they used to crack... Well, an ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> what bird is this? Dropping its egg to let the kids out? You're a maniac! You are a maniac! And Plato <laughs> had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, oh, there's, there's a little rock, I'll drop the egg. Hit him on the head. Killed him. Now, this is what I was saying before about... I mean, well, I'm letting too much go now, cos I'm so desensitised to his nonsense, I let him go, the bird saw Plato and said, there's a rock down there. Yeah. Well, if he's dropping, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying, though, right? Before, about knowledge and that, our, our knowledge is, is hassle, or success is That's hassle. That, I, now, now th- I think that was Newton... <laughs> Knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why, why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, an egg on his head? Because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out. Yeah. He could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard, his knowledge killed him. He, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine? Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't. I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy nilly. Willy nilly. Willy nilly. Okay. Willy nilly. No, yeah. no. But I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but what I've does willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch in time save? So you nine understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, but it sounds I mean, nice, you used it. it. You said it willy nilly. But um, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So it's if not... you got a, so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because if you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out of a hole in your coat, is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching a stitch sometimes time, today, say in fifteen or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than than a stitching time saves nine? So yours is. This is what you wanted to be a quote, right? Well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then uh, you know. Well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. No, but it's the same. <laughs> that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like I never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No, that's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know. Um, Symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if 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 you if you're not sure about something. Like you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been, not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it because now Suzanne will listen to this and she'll go, oh, "Yeah, you haven't been," and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a a little uh, a, a qualified doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What they what just year pop are the... we in? They. <laughs> what are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? <laughs> no, what I mean no. is... we've got Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick. You, yeah, you, would you prefer it to a be... A mechanical thumb, a, a robot thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. 
put, just put the camera up straight away. If no, I'm they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit up your, uh, 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 your back passage. They, what I are you just, worried I, about? I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right? You've got to go there. You yeah. sat on the bus stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour, I'm going to have a finger up the arse, right? <laughs> what is the problem? And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably <laughs> check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's... Yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That? I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they? Wow! <laughs> How can they teach? Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse, going, "It seems to be all right." Carl, you don't understand the phrase "a stitch in time saves night." I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But but then, who knows the... what trouble you're going to cause? No, but then at least you would get stuck. Yeah, you would get stuck. Susanna, come out. Your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> OK, I think it's probably time. I've just Let me just check my watch. Yeah, it's monkey news time. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news, yeah. So this week, anyway, it's about... It's more about tall buildings and stuff. Oh, yeah. It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh, right? yeah. And uh, you know what builders are like? They sort of move about, don't they, from, from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah, well, once they've built it, the building's done and they move on to build some more. Building, building, just building, yeah. So he goes to his next job and that, right? Who does? The builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to, like, the, 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 boss, building. the boss of this building who's building it. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK. Yeah. And he, and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> OK. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so he says, uh, he says, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says, we're working on this one here. He said, uh... Get going on it, like, there's your bricks and your cement and stuff, get on with it. Yeah. So the... So Any the, plans? So the, so the, <laughs> just build. Just just start building. Yeah. Go up. They're getting on with it and stuff, it's all going well. Right? Yeah. Um, but he notices that there's someone working high up, mm. right, on, on <laughs> okay. the top bit. So anyway, he's, he's saying to, like, the other workers, he's going, What's, who's that up there? Who's that up like, there? He's, yeah. he's working on his own. The, what, the little fella, was he? And, the uh, little hairy fella up there. Who's the little hairy fella up there with the top, uh, hard hat? And, and the other fellows are going, look, you know, don't ask questions, you know, the boss decides who he takes on, we're mm. happy to be getting paid here. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask questions! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, he's, he's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything. He said, no, just let him get on with it, you know, we work well as a team. So anyway, <laughs> what nonsense is so, this? So oh, he believes all this. Yep. So he sees the boss and he goes, "That fella up there, who's the fella up there? He's, he's pretty good." And he's like, "Look, you know, just get on with the job. Yeah, I'll pay you. Let's just all get on with our jobs." That <laughs> lunchtime comes, they're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwiches. He's just thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Is yeah. he just still going? Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, "He says, isn't, isn't that fella up there uh, going to come down and join us for lunch?" He said, uh, he said, like I said, mate, don't don't worry about him. Right? Yeah. He's very secretive. I'm suspicious about this fella. I don't know, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why he's working through his lunch. I don't know why he's not scared of heights. I don't know why he's swinging from girder to girder. It's weird. Go on. So he said, oh, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there. He said um, he's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. He probably needs some more nuts to... Uh... Right, sure. And what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food or...? So he said, what, nuts? He said, yeah, just, uh, there's a bag full of them there. Just just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job. So anyway, he picks these nuts up. Nuts, right? yep. Just ucks them on. He thinks they're not that heavy, no. considering, you know, I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they? Like nuts big and bolts nuts, and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh, no, what's in there? Nuts. What, you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat, oh. right? So they send the bag up, and he's thinking, what's all that about? He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out. You can see that... He's a little chimp running about, so he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why so, isn't he? Because he's working for an organisation that's, you know, there's unions for this sort of stuff, isn't <laughs> is there? Yeah, he's not going, that's amazing. They've got a chimp riveting this building together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not scary. He's wondering if they're breaking union rules. <laughs> so he, he, go, he goes... You didn't half talk So he goes, shit, and has a with he the goes boss. to the boss and he goes, look, I've worked out what you're playing at here. Yeah. He said, oh, them out Is the there. boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> so he goes, look, you know... 
We're just all trying to earn a living here. He said, uh, don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him. Don't don't interfere. He's paying him? And he's saying, look, I I'm just not happy with this. It's, it's not allowed. So the boss was saying, well... We pay honest, peanuts, mate, we get monkeys. He said, to be honest, mate, you know, uh, he's a great worker. <laughs> he's known for doing what he does. He's a good grafter. <laughs> if one of you's going to go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go because he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah. He was made redundant. None of that of happened. He, he was he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off and that, and that's no. where that saying about um, you know, like there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America. It's like, like the chimp off the old block. Is is where. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so that's monkey news.